everyone good morning Monday again survived another week we're doing okay <clears throat> just gonna wait for a few of you to join before I crack on and start making bracelets Um, had a really nice uh, weekend I've had a weekend with um, John my husband and Beth my stepdaughter we had a day in the garden yesterday um, a bit duller here today no Sun um, I think it's gonna get a bit rainy this week um, so we tried to get as much done in the garden as we could and the two of them made a little swing we've got a huge big blossom tree in the middle of the garden which is beautiful and they made a swing yesterday which was very fun um a little father-daughter project which was cute hi morning kitty do a nice little facetime with you after this video we're going to plan um our next week's worth of projects so keep keep your eyes peeled for those hi morning judith hi paula so, um, what did we do yesterday? Uh, what were we making yesterday? Oh, we were using the clover beads, weren't we? Crystal clover beads. I hope um, some of you managed to get hold of them. We had some lovely messages, um, really nice little sets we had on the website. Hi, good morning, Christine. Hi, Kieran. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Hi, morning, Lucy. Morning, Mum. She's watching. We had a really good family quiz last night as well. Um, so my sister, I've got a sister um, and her boyfriend, they're in Bedfordshire. My mum and dad are in uh, Bedfordshire as well, oh, Buckinghamshire now. Um, and my other sister and her husband are in the Cayman Islands. Um, and all of us were on a little Zoom chat last night doing um, a quiz, which was really fun. And it was nice to see everyone. Um, hi, good morning, Alicia. Hi, Jill. Hi, Dean. Uh, hi, Lynn. Good morning, everyone. Okay, good. Right, so I've got a good few of you. Um, so let's get going. This is what we're going to make today. So uh, slightly different. Yesterday we had the earrings. Today we're going to make um, a little woven bracelet. And I just popped on the description. If any of you have the bundle kits, um, this is Project 17 from USB 2. So if you have your bundles, then you'll be able to get your materials out. Quick run and go and get them and we can make this bracelet together. So I'm gonna make it in this beautiful, um, sort of very pale blue color. Um, there's lots of different um, fire polish beads. So the fire polish beads, I, I gave you a little um, chat about them yesterday, a little quick description. Good grief, I'm not gonna keep up with all your comments, but good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so this, um, we have pearls running through the middle. I'm also gonna use seed beads on the outside and fire polish. Now, fire polish, um, is a much softer bead than some of the faceted beads. So when they produce it and they manufacture it, it's got lots of different facets on it. Um, Mum says you need to let folks know that you guys won the quiz. <laughs> we did. Me, John and Beth were the winners. We had four rounds, ten questions in each of them, and there were things like sport, which we were rubbish on, um, a bit of like celeb, a bit of music, celeb gossip and news, uh, music geography, which we weren't too good on, but Beth was quite good. Um, so yeah, we won, which was funny. Um, so fire polish beads, they are a faceted bead, and then they're reheated after they've been faceted, and it kind of softens and just melts down the edges a little bit um, so they're fantastic beads to use in weaving because they're not as sharp and harsh on your threads as um, things like bicones so they're a fantastic bead they are great for weaving which I'm going to use um, now uh, with the pearls and also they still give you that nice sparkle and shine as well which is really lovely um, Lucy says the bracelets are gorgeous good morning Maureen just got back from walking the dog here I'm going to walk ours afterwards um, Elaine made one of these a little while ago it's one of my favorites are oh, fantastic so yeah this is what we're going to do I'm going to turn you around um, pop you down on the mat I've had to I've got a very precarious sort of lighting rig set up today it's really dull um, so I'm going to try and make it as bright as I can and um, hopefully nothing's going to fall on me while we go okay so I'm going to turn you around and we'll get down onto the mat okie dokie so let's have a look what we've got so I'm going to use a bar toggle clasp um, which is really nice sometimes when you're working with larger beads on your bracelets um, you want to have a clasp that's a really nice feature and you want to make sure that they're sizable and and in you know in keeping with um, 
your your bracelet sizing so you still want it to be a nice feature make sure it doesn't overpower it um, if you're using smaller beads then things like a little magnetic clasp are really good to use um, you're gonna have to excuse my poorly thumb um, the dog mistook my thumb for his rope chew toy while we were playing in the garden yesterday um, so I, I don't know maybe I should have a plaster on it sorry it's gonna be a bit a bit close for you guys. Okay, so um, Anne's asking which USB please. This is a project from USB 2. It's project 17, but don't forget you can also get this as your free download today. So bead weaving, um, as you can see, Kitty's instructions are really beautifully clear and very easy to follow. So um, we've got all of the instructions written as well as photographed. This will be your download for today on the website for 24 hours. So just pop onto the um, little section that's free projects, pop it into your basket. Um, Simon uh, messaged this morning and he's added in loads of fire polish beads. Um, there are lots of kits using fire polish beads, which obviously is today's feature. These are the fire polish. Look at those, they're beautiful. Um, and the kits actually start from £4.15. So um, hopefully there is going to be something in there for everybody's budget. Um, all you need to do is add in your thread, your needle and your clasp, which I'm sure many of you have at home. Um, as you can see, the fire polish gives you a beautiful sparkle. And like I said, it's not as harsh on your thread either. So um, I've got the pearls. I'm going to be using um, size 8 seed beads and these have a beautiful luster to them. Um, as you can see Kitty um, puts all of the kits together and um, get rid of that stray one. Um, Kitty puts all of the kits together and the tones just work beautifully. She's got a great eye for colour and matching things up so you don't ever have to worry about the design feature for those. That's always done for you. So I've got my size 8 seed beads. I've got the four millimeter fire polish. Um, we've also got a six mil glass pearl and then obviously my toggle clasp as well. And then I've got a needle and thread. So I have threaded on um, just about a meter, um, probably a little bit more. If I run out, I'm gonna show you obviously how to attach your threads as well as we go. Um, <clears throat> I never really work with more than a meter because it will get tangled up and, and you can get in all sorts of a mess. Um, so I'm going to start off with two of my seed beads and then we're going to add on a pearl. Two more seed beads and a fire polish. And as you can see, I just put the materials out on my mat. I just make sure I've got a nice little collection of all of them so that I can just alternate and pick up really easily. Uh, fire polish, two more seed beads. And then I'm going to thread on one side of my clasp. It doesn't matter which, just add on one side. I'm going to bring this down so that I've got a little bit of a tail left and we'll weave this back in once we are finished. And then I'm gonna add on another seed bead on the other side. So as you can see, the size eight seed beads fit really beautifully on either side of the clasp and they're not gonna go through the middle. So you've got the right size hole there for the beads, that's gonna secure that into place. And then I'm gonna come back up through the second seed bead on the other side. So through to this one, and what that will do is loop my clasp on, she says once she gets hold of it. That's gonna loop the clasp on and I've got my nice long thread around here. So that's gonna sit on either side like so. And then I'm also gonna come back through my seed bead and my fire polish. Oh, I'm trying very hard not to hit the camera, sorry. I'm a bit fingers and thumbs today. Let's pull that through. So as you can see, that's gonna give you a nice little end on your bracelet. So you could always go through that a few times as well. I'm gonna use my thread to weave back in. Um, so that will be um, very secure. And then we're going to come through and we want to loop these beads back over so that we create um, a little loop. So I'm going to bring my needle through here and it's going to give me a little loop. Oh, like so. And then I'm going to tie off my 
tail thread, I'm just going to pull these nice and tight, my tail thread with my original base thread. And I'm just going to do this with a couple of knots. Um, I'm going to try and catch up with um, a few of your comments in a minute. I know a lot of you are asking about the kits. Um, pop onto the Totally Beads website and you will be able to get loads of different fire polish kits today. Um, they're starting at about £4.15, so amazing value for money. Um, you just need to choose um, your uh, colour coordinating thread and your needle and your clasp but once you check out in your basket all of those things um, will be available to add into your basket as well okay so as you can see now I've got my lovely clasp and I'm starting the little uh, weave that we're going to be creating and then all we're going to do is uh, move up through these seed beads and through our pearl so that I'm ready to start looping on lots of my other beads. Um, it's like a little right angle weave. Um, Kieran says, where do you get the free download? Go to the Totally Beads website and all of the beads are categorised. So um, like where you would go and search for your products. Once you click on the categories, there is a, a category called free projects. And if you go in there, the download will be available as well as some of your fire polish kits um, and then you just add it to your basket and when you check out that uh, PDF will be emailed through to you. Um, so this is going to be the project for today. They only last until um, 10 o'clock the next day. So you want to get hold of that whilst you can. Okay, so we're going to fill in the gaps afterwards. We've got a couple of runs to do on these bracelets but when you're coming out of your pearl now what we're going to do is start looping on lots of other beads. So I'm going to pick up a fire polish bead and a pearl and a fire polish. And then I'm going to go through the pearl in the opposite direction. So you can see my thread is exiting from the top. I'm going to come through the bottom of the pearl. And what that will do is loop on the next section. And you can already see how the bracelet's going to start to take shape. So we're um, adding the pearl through the centre and they're going to have um, the fire polish on either side. Um, Vanessa says, love this, just came online so I missed the beginning. Is it, is it available as a set to buy? We've got lots of fire polish kits, yeah, on the website. Go and have a look. They're starting from just a few pounds, um, but you'll need to add in your own clasp, um, needle and thread. Um, I've also just seen a few others. Sorry, I'm missing a load of things. David, good morning from sunny Frinton. Oh, you're where Kitty and Simon are. Lovely. Um, hi Valerie, where do you get the kit please? Hopefully you've heard me say that now, so that's on the website. Um, Maria Frozen, I hope I'm okay for everybody else. Um, Alison, I've made this as a wraparound bracelet, oh lovely, so that you can use it as necklaces and chokers. Lucy, thank you so much for putting the link to the website, that's perfect, thank you. Um, Kieran, also, can you tell the difference between fire polish beads and non-fire polish beads? Well, a fire polish is going to have those um, softer edges, so just like I was saying, when they manufacture them and they heat them up it gives you a, a, a much softer finish than a faceted bead so um, faceted have the sharp edges okay so I'm now just going to keep on going with my fire polish bead a pearl and a fire polish and then again you just loop through the pearl in the opposite direction uh, in the same direction sorry so you're linking it on all the way through and this will start to take shape very quickly and then to position yourself at the pearl at the end of the row to add on the next loop you just go up through the side bead so that's through this fire polish that you've just added and then up through the pearl as well and you'll notice that I'm holding all of the beadwork in my hand to keep that tension nice and tight so um, you can see that there's no gaps there um, Oh, excellent. Uh, Kitty's replying to everybody as well. Um, so she's just saying about the crystals. Yeah, so they're, they are, um, that's a good description, like a soccer ball shape. Very good. Yeah, they're still crystal beads. It's just that it gives you a little bit of a softer finish. Okay, so then you're ready to position for the next one. And we just keep on going through. So sometimes I like to flip the work so that the needle is always going up through the pearl. 
Um, it's whatever way works for you. And then again, I flip it over so that I can hold it in my left hand and I've got that visibility to then move through and that just keeps my tension um, really good. So then up through the last pearl and again, looping on a fire polish, a pearl and a fire polish, up through that pearl, pulling that nice and tightly. I'll flip that over again, keep that all in place and up through the side. So this is a right angle weave. There's lots of different um, weaves, obviously, that you can use to create your bracelets and such like, but you'll see that using um, larger beads like this, your bracelet actually takes shape really quickly, which is great. Um, and you could do this with seed beads, you could do it with just pearls. There's lots of different ways. And then what we'll do at the end when we start running back through our bracelet, obviously this is a nice weave just as it is, but you can see that because we've got gaps in between, it doesn't give you that sort of rigidity. <laughs> easy for you to say. Um, so what we'll do is when we run back through, we'll fill these gaps in here with our seed beads. And that's then going to give it a really nice uh, structure. It's going to keep it nice and secure. And as you can see, I'll pick up one of the darker ones maybe. So you can see that we're creating these little loops in between and then you come back and fill them afterwards. So again, it's going to give you that nice strength in your bracelet as well, because you're running back through the bracelet a couple of times. So it's going to make it nice and secure and give you that nice strong tension. So if your tension isn't great, it doesn't matter because with weaves like this, because you're going to come back through it, you can always perfect it afterwards. Um, so I hope everyone's doing OK. Has anyone been making the uh, kits that we've been showing in the videos we've had so many different techniques now i'd love to know what you've enjoyed the most or what you've benefited from the most is there anything that we've kind of really helped you master um whilst obviously we're in we're in lockdown and we've been doing these i'm so sorry about my thumb um for anyone who missed the start of the video <laughs> i did apologize about it um i was playing tug of war with the big dog yesterday so it's not even the cockapoo it's the mally that got my finger um we were playing with a rope and and my uh my finger was just a little bit too close and he's a strong old dog um i took a bit of a funny turn afterwards because your nails are really sensitive aren't they but um it was fine it just look it looks worse than it actually is um, yeah, so we've got quite a few projects planned for you already. Obviously, if there is anything else that you are really struggling with and you would like some help with, do let us know. Kitty's online. She's replying to everything at the moment. Um, and I'm going to have a FaceTime call with her once I finish this video. And we're going to plan uh, the next couple of weeks worth of videos as well. So let us know if there's anything that you really want to see. Um, Camille says, I'm enjoying the gemstone trees and chain mail. Oh, lovely. Yeah, the gemstone trees are just beautiful. For anyone who hasn't seen them, pop through the posts on the Facebook page. Um, Kitty made the most amazing wire trees using gemstone uh, chips. Um, it's such an amazing take on using materials that we use for our jewellery, um, but just doing something so different with them. Um, which is why I like doing the French beaded flowers as well, because it's it's using materials we're familiar with, but just thinking outside the box a little bit, which is nice. Oh, my mum says, I bet that hurt so bad. It did, mum. I, I laid down in the hammock afterwards. John said I went a bit of a funny colour. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm not, I don't have a very high pain threshold anyway at the best of times. Um, Lucy says, I'm on project five on USB one now and really enjoying it. Uh, hope by the time I get to USB two, project 17, I'll be able to make that. Oh, absolutely, Lucy. So Lucy's been um, watching the video since we started and, and um, you hadn't actually started making jewellery, had you, Lucy? So Kitty has done some educational USBs. You'll find them on the on the website. 
Um, the first USB, um, so it's actually a multi-port USB, first of all. So don't, don't be put off that it sounds a bit technical. You can plug these into your phone, your iPad, your um, Amazon Fire, the tablets, um, even onto your computers and PCs as well. Or if you have a smart TV and it has a USB port on it, then uh, you can use them on those as well. So it's actually a quadruple port USB. You don't need any Wi-Fi. It just um, has the downloads on there. So they're printable PDF patterns, um, but also um, she quite often has um, bundles and projects that you can then make along with it. So you'll get all your goodies in there to be able to make everything. Uh, there's um, USB one is starting your jewellery making. So it's not necessarily for beginners, even if you've been beading for a long time, it's still going to give you professional tips and advice on how to finish your bracelets and necklaces, your earrings, a um, bit of troubleshooting. So there's lots of, isn't this looking gorgeous? There's lots of different patterns on there, um, lots of different techniques for you to master. There's uh, project galleries and then there's video as well. So if you're enjoying watching these videos, on the USBs, um, you also have make along videos like this. Obviously, um, it's not interactive, um, but that means that you just get the full tutorial. So it's just like having a one-to-one -one workshop. So the first one is beginning. The second one is progressing. So going into slightly more intricate and longer makes, um, working with quite a lot of different materials. And then your third one is the first in the mastering series. So we didn't want to call it advanced because I didn't want to put anybody off and think, oh, well, I'm not advanced. What it's going to help you do is actually master um, several 30 projects, to, uh, or is it 20 projects, sorry, to be precise, um, flat stitches. So there's so many different weaving projects. If you like doing your weaving with needle and threads, then that is one to go for. I know so many of you have been enjoying them. Um, lots of people saying they're really enjoying the videos. I think somebody said, oh, Anne said, I loved making the bracelets that you demonstrated last week. Um, I'll give you, I've got quite a few. I'm building up a good old jewellery collection here because obviously we're sitting and making these every day. I'll take you through some of the bracelets that I've made um, since the start. Um, now I'm, I'm going to try and finish this bracelet live because I know sometimes we do little quick makes and other times I think it's nice just to sit and have a little chat. I'm going to make this from beginning to end so that you can all just see how how easy it is. Um, and of course, it is just a pattern repeat. So hopefully by seeing what I'm doing, it's also allowing you to see how quickly it really does take to make. I, I'd say this is probably an hour or so, um, only because it's quite it's quite big, but we have to have to run through it. Um, a couple of times as well but you can see as you go you're just getting better and better at it because it's a pattern repeat so by the time you finish it hopefully your tension will be spot on um, and it's only using a needle and thread so you don't even need any tools I've used scissors to cut the thread um, but that's it so if you are thinking about getting into jewellery making, things like this are a great place to start. I don't think it looks like a beginner project. I think anyone who made this as their first item of jewellery would be dead chuffed with it, really. Um, and then, of course, if you want to make these to gift or sell, you can. Kitty doesn't have an angel policy on her designs, which is really lovely. So you can make them and sell them. Um, and if you're making to sell or gift, if you think about the... Um, clasp that you're putting on the end of it if you can add extender chains that's always really helpful because it will just allow the recipient or your customer to um, have it to fit their exact size or of course you can take bespoke orders and make it for someone specific and, and get the length of their break, uh, of their wrist so I'm actually going to make this one for mum um had a little chat with her this morning. We had a quick little video call and she let me know what size it is that she wears. So I'll finish this one for her. Um, okay, hopefully you are all, 
Okay, I'm just gonna go through some of your comments. Um, Alicia, watching these videos has taken my we my weaving phobias away. Oh, good. I've been making jewelry, but I always thought weaving would be difficult and complicated. And you and Kitty have proved me wrong and wiped my fears away. That is exactly what we're here for. Um, and it's so true. I think a lot of people are put off and then actually just seeing how easy it is and I'm not having to concentrate you know very hard obviously I'm talking to you guys at the same time and answering your questions so you can see it really doesn't have to be difficult I mean don't get me wrong there are projects out there that are very intricate and they will take hours to make but likewise and that that's great because sometimes if you want to lose a good couple of days you can really get yourself engrossed in um very advanced projects but for those of you who just want to get started and and perhaps want to try something that's a little bit easier things like this are just perfect so I'm so glad it's helped you with that. Um, Jill says, obviously, I enjoy the tutorials, but honestly, just enjoy the company. Oh, thank you, Jill. I love beaded flowers and made some lavender yesterday, just waiting for my beads to come for the orchid. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I thought I'll do a bit of a longer one today because I was quite quick yesterday, just making a pair of earrings. So I thought, let's all keep each other company for a bit longer today. Obviously, it's just pattern repeat, so I hope I'm not boring you. Um watching the whole thing come together. But again, like Jill said, it's just nice to have a bit of company, isn't it? Um, Karen, I've been watching and loving the videos and I love making the fringe necklace. Oh yeah, that's a really nice one. Um, we've got quite a few different techniques coming up. So um, we've been doing lots of things. We've had some wire, we've had memory wire, we've been um, weaving with seed beads and um, some larger beads. We've used monofilament, threads, elastic, um, Kitty and Christopher were making um, some beaded beads that you can also use for home decor. Um, I've showed how to make a French beaded orchid. Um, we haven't done any lavender on a live, but we do have those kits available on the website. So that's what Jill was just saying she's been making. Um, Lucy says, I put everything I make up on the totally handmade group. The group is really lovely. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So um, on the Facebook page, we have um, quite a few groups. Some of them are bead specific. Um, I'm afraid I've neglected those groups a little bit recently. Um, I will make sure I post some inspiration and such like in there for you. Um, okay, so I'm just going to finish off the end of this bracelet and I'm going to do it in exactly the same way as we started. So um, do you remember... Let me get this thread out of the way. Um, so we had our seed beads going into our fire polish and the other seed beads, and then we'll attach the other side of our bracelet. Yeah, so if you go into the groups, um, there are um, bead-specific groups, like I just said, um, but also there is... Um, what was I saying? Sorry. Um, I'm just trying to remember my beads. Um, there is also a, a group in there called Totally Handmade. And that is where all our customers share their images of things that they've been making, uh, which is really lovely. So everyone can use it as inspiration. Um, we have hundreds of you in there now, which is really great. So if you're enjoying the company of these videos and you just want to share your ideas and get a bit of inspiration from everybody else as well, that's a really good place to go. Lucy, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay, so I'm going to finish off. I've got my two seed beads, fire polish. Then we're going to add two seed beads, go through our clasp, adding the other seed bead on the other side. And remember, we missed out that first one, so that's going to go into the, into the centre. Up through the fire polish, the seed bead and the fire polish. And I'm just going to hold the clasp. And when I pull that tightly, you'll see that all of my beadwork travelled all the way up to as near to the clasp as I could go. We'll finish off with two more seed beads and cross through the pearl. And that will give me an exact replica of the beginning of the bracelet. And then we've got their cl uh, our clasp on there as well. OK, and then you're ready to start running back up through the bracelet and to fill in the gap. So I'll show you a couple of those and then we're probably pretty much done um, because then you're just going to fill in the gaps and um, we'll go up and down all the way. So I've probably been long enough with you now. Um, and then you've, you've seen the whole thing beginning to end. I will probably need to attach a new thread actually. So 
I will do that so that you can see because I know I, I tend to work with about a metre, um, which um, I normally do as, as a very generous arm span. Um, with things like this, you, you probably don't need too much more. Of course, it depends on the size of the bracelet that you're making as well. So you can see I'm coming out of a fire polish. I'm just picking up a seed bead and I'm gonna go in between the next fire polish. And what that's gonna do is fill that gap, and now this is gonna neaten and perfect um, a lot of the tension. So it's gonna fill those gaps, it's gonna give me a really nice solid bracelet, filling these gaps, and um, if your tension isn't great, this is gonna pull it nice and tight, so you can see already, it just neatens it up and gives it that perfect little finish. So sometimes it's really silly things like adding in one extra bead. You might make this as a bracelet. It looks really nice um, just as it is, but actually this is going to perfect the tension. It's gonna hide some of these visible threads. So you can see at the moment, you can see the thread coming out of the pearl and around the beads, but just by adding in that seed bead, it pulls it all nice and tight and it makes that thread invisible. And the really nice thing is when you're giving bracelets as gifts, or of course you're making them, sometimes it's nice for someone to look at it and just think, oh, how did you make that? So little touches like this, where you're kind of um, making the rest of the components and your weave invisible is really nice. It makes it look a lot more intricate than it really is. So how many of you looked at the bracelet at the beginning and thought, oh gosh, that might be a bit tricky? Now you've seen me do it, you'll realise how easy it is. Um, okay, I can see that Kitty is asking, uh, Kitty is answering a lot of your questions. So sorry, I haven't really been, haven't really been concentrating on the comments too much, but I know uh, Kitty will keep you right. Um, someone asking about, oh, Camille says never long enough. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what size needle are you using? I'm using a size 10 beading needle. Um, I pretty much use 10s for everything, to be honest. Um, you could use an easy eye needle as well if you find um, if you find that uh, you struggle threading your needles because um, the eyes on them are quite small. Um, and of course, the, so if anyone's new, you get different sizes of beading needles um, because sometimes when you're working with really small beads, like size 15 seed beads, which are the smallest ones that we do, um, and you're going to go through them several times, you need a small needle um, because, of course, the gaps close down. Oh, look, I think we will need a new thread. Um, the gaps close up as as you go through them many times with your, your threads. Um, so you do get different sizes. I just, really, I just use a 10 for everything. Um, okay, so now that I've got to the top, I'm filling that gap between our first pearl. I'm gonna come through these beads and just cross over so that I can start making my way. This is our tail and I'll weave that through in a minute and finish the threads off. So we'll do that with half hitch knots. So I'm just gonna then cross over through the seed beads on the other side so that we're up to the top again, and then I'll start working back through the bracelet. So we'll go all the way up to the other side again. Um, so at the moment, it looks a bit wonky because where one side is now tighter um, and the other side is looser, it's a little bit wonky, but what we'll be doing here is pulling it all straight because now we're filling in the other side. So you can see it kind of curves off to one side now, um, whereas what this will do is just bring that back and neaten it up where we're filling in the gaps and it will give us a beautiful, lovely finish. So again, I'm pulling my tension quite tight all the time, and you'll see that um, I'm just running it through my fingers. I'm keeping the beads kind of poised on the end of my finger. So what that's doing is allowing me to get the needle through, oh, got two. That's allowing me to get the needle through really easily. I'm not piercing any threads, so what you wanna do is just be careful, you can see here that this thread tends to get in the way a bit and you don't want to pierce it because then your bead won't sit perfectly. If you do pierce your thread at any point, you'll know because um, it means you're going, you're, you're going through um, like a loose thread. Oh, these are picking up two at a time. Um, and it will mean that your bead won't sit properly. Um, rather than trying to go back through the thread, just always unthread your needle, pull it through, go back a step, and then thread your needle again. If you try to 
bring your needle through the thread another time, you're just going to end up in a whole heap of mess. Um, so it's always better to just unthread your needle and start again. Just go back to whatever step it is that you have, um, you've pierced it on. Um, okay, hopefully, I think, I think everyone's answering, uh, Kitty, sorry, is answering all of your questions. I don't think I'm missing any comments. Um, lovely oh you're all talking to each other as well which is really nice hopefully you'll find some nice little beady friends like-minded people um on these pages and don't forget if you go and join the um totally handmade uh group that's where um everyone shares their pictures of things that they've been making i think one of the very first videos that we did as we started to do these um lives uh sort of when we started lockdown, I think were one of the um, the bicone and wire flower that we made. And so many people shared so many different creations that they'd done with it. It was really lovely. Um, and it's just so nice to know that you're all then making um, with Kitty and I and, and getting inspired from the videos as well. So we've got a few more videos coming up this week. Um, where's my little list? I'll take you through them. Uh, so tomorrow's Tuesday. So um, that's going to be Kitty. Kitty is going to be here on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I'm going to be here on Thursday, then Kitty Friday, Saturday, and then me on Sunday as well. Actually, I think I might be doing Saturday. I think we swap today. Um, okay, so now that I'm at the end, at my other end, I'm going to fill in these gaps that I missed at the beginning. Because I was exiting from the pearl, I didn't want to add a seed bead because you want your seed beads to be running through the centre. If I were to add in a seed bead here, my thread path would be wonky, not straight. So I left this one until I'm coming back up here and then we'll finish our threads. So my metre and a half, uh, sorry, well, my, my metre worth of thread, it was a, gen a very generous arm span, has made the whole bracelet. And you'll see I've still got a little bit left here. Um, I'm going to finish this off so that I can show you how to finish your threads. But how I'm going to finish this now, and I'm just pulling that nice and tight so that my bracelet is um, symmetrical, so all my tension is good and I've got no gaps. Um, how I'm gonna finish this off now and weave the tail in is exactly the same way as you would join a new thread in the middle. So if you're running out of thread, so I probably would have let this go about to here, and as you start to get shorter, just try and, um, try and attach a new thread before you're too, too short, because it can be a little bit um, tricky. So um, you want to see when you're when you're beginning to run out and you know you're going to have to attach a new thread. And we're going to do that by tying a half hitch knot. So I have a thread path here. Hopefully you can see I've got a thread path going from my fire polish to my pearl. And this is from the original loop that we created down on, the, on that base foundation stitch. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go underneath that thread. So no beads, just underneath the thread. I'm going to pull that through and I'm going to wait until I have a little loop and then I'm going to bring my needle through that loop. And when I pull that tightly, what that's going to do is give me a half hitch knot on my thread and they're pretty much invisible, but they're super strong. So then I'm going to come through my pearl, also through my fire polish. Uh, let's go through another pearl. I'm going to zigzag it through and I'm going to do the same thing again. So now I'm exiting from the pearl, I'm going to go underneath my thread, like so, pull that through until I've got a little loop, bring my needle through there and pull that tight. Now my tail, which one is my tail? This one. My tail is caught in there, so I'm just going to pull that through. I'll make my tail a little bit shorter. Pull that knot so that is nice and tight and secure and then I'm just going to go through a few beads and by going through a few beads so I'm just replicating that path that I took on my original foundation stitch going through a few away from those knots so I've got two knots which has secured that into place where are my cutters um two knots securing that in place and I've moved away from my knot as well and then when you're going to trim that off I'm just going to take my cutters I'm going to use my flush side of my cutters. So this flush side here, I'm going to 
put it, um, I'm pushing down with my cutters and pulling up with the thread. And that way I get a really close finish. You can't even see where the thread is. And I know I've got a good few knots in here as well. On my other end where my tail is, now I don't normally like to thread a needle live, but hey ho, hang on one sec. I'm just gonna do this so I can weave this one in. Oh yay. My eyes are obviously working today. Um, I'm gonna move away. So do you remember, this is where our tail is from the very beginning and this is where our knot is. So I'm gonna move away from the knot. I'm gonna move up into my bracelet just so that I'm nowhere near that first original knot. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this end as well. So this is my starting tail thread. Underneath that thread path, pulling it through so I've got a loop, needle through that loop, and pulling that tightly. And again, just weaving through a few of my beads to come away from that knot. Oh, don't wanna go through that seed bead. To come away from that knot, and then we'll do one more as well. So all the time I'm reinforcing the bracelet, I'm moving away from the knots, which means if any of the threads were to ever, um, you know, stretch over time or to become a little bit looser, I'm nowhere near those knots. So it's always gonna give me that little bit of hidden strength as well. Just make sure it's easy. I mean, it's easier to do with these bigger beads, but just make sure if you're doing it with seed beads that you are um, not catching any beads in those knots. And then let's go through a pearl. And we'll finish it off the same way. So lay it flat, pull this thread up, push your cutters into your work, pull that nice and tight, and that's gonna give you an invisible finish on both ends. So you know all your threads are in there, you know it's nice and secure. And mum, when I get to see you again, I've got a nice little gift for you. So there you go really nice little woven bracelet don't forget this is your pdf download for today if you have usb 2 this is project 17. um you've got a beautiful clasp on here as well we have some kits available let me turn you back up i don't actually know how long i've been but oh what a mess sorry i don't actually know how long i've been this morning but um it's probably not more than an hour i would say i have no idea what the time is um but we've made the, the bracelet in its entirety, so beginning to end. So if you have um, a little bit of time free, obviously you know that you can do a weaving project without it having to be, what is my head doing today? Um, you can actually make a little woven bracelet without having to um, use any really intricate designs. It's a nice, quick, easy make. Um, and, and something you can just lose yourself for an hour or so in. Um, it doesn't matter if it takes you longer either. Um, Doris says, how many pearls for a seven and a half inch bracelet, please? Okay, so this is um, eight, eight and a half inches, and I have 27 pearls in there. Um, and this is, what size was this pearl? It was a six mil, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so if you're gonna do, what did you say, seven and a half? You'd probably look at, I don't know, about 22? something like that. Um, oh, 45 minutes in total. There you go. Whole woven bracelet, 45 minutes beginning to end. It doesn't matter if it takes you longer. It can take you as, as long as you need. Um, but as you can see, it is quite a nice quick fix. Um, okay, so tomorrow is Tuesday. Kitty will be on here at 10 o'clock. Um, Kitty, if you're still there, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh, I think she's doing the Miracle Beads Flat Spiral. Um, and it's a rainbow bracelet. Um, if you haven't... Oh, and Kitty says these kits make two bracelets. Of course, because I've got so many materials left over. Um, let me show you my strand of pearls. Hold on one sec. Um, these are the pearls that I was using. In fact, you're going you're gonna to have um, loads more. Look at everything I've got left. So I've got 27, I've made an eight and a half inch bracelet um, and I've got all of these left over as well as um, half of my um, fire polish and I've still got seed beads on the mat and I've got all of these left over as well. Um, so your free PDF download is the one that we have made today. It's your bead weaving. I'm sorry this is a bit crumpled up. I lost it and I realised I was sat on it. Um, Monday, eh? Um, so this is your bead weaving project. Um, it's your free download. Pop onto the website. 
in the free category section, pop that into your basket and that will get emailed through to you. Um, Kitty and Simon have also added lots of fire polish kits. They start at just £4.15. Um, so you could make a, a necklace or bracelet for just a couple of pounds. Um, you will need to add in your clasp, your needle and your thread. Um, you might already have them at home or when you're checking out your basket, um, you'll have the availability to add those in as well as a little reminder. Um, Okay, so yeah, tomorrow Kitty will be here, 10 o'clock, doing her um, flat spiral, so rainbow miracle beads, which is beautiful. Um, on Wednesday, um, I can't remember what Kitty's doing then. Um, and then on Thursday, I'm going to be doing, I can't remember if I'm going to do my pin collar or the clip-on earrings, because we changed a few things around a bit. Um and I'm gonna go and have a FaceTime now, I'm gonna make a coffee, have a little FaceTime with Kitty, and we are gonna plan our next couple of weeks as well. Um, so let us know if there's anything else that you would like to see, anything else you're struggling with that you need some help with, um, and we're more than happy to help out and add it to our little to-do list as well. Thank you so much for joining, loved making this with you this morning. Feel like I've achieved something for, for the Monday morning as well, um, which is really nice. Hope you enjoy. Um, don't forget to join in on the Totally Handmade Facebook page um, and share the pictures of what you've been making along with us as well. I'd love to know if you go back and have a look through the videos, get your materials out and make together with us, um, which would be really nice. I'd love to see what you're doing um, and, and what you're gaining from the videos. Um, Yes, all the events will be on the Facebook page. So on the Facebook page, there is a tab along the top where you get videos, photos. There's one called Groups, which is where you'll find Totally Handmade. And then there is also um, one called Events. If you go in there, all of the videos that we have coming up will all be um, uh, dated and by project as well. So if you are interested in those, <coughs> excuse me one sec. If you're interested, you can go into them, click that you're interested or click that you are going to attend, and then you'll also get reminders of when they're coming up as well. So if there's specific ones, um, then um, you'll be able to get notifications of those so you don't miss anything. Um, thank you so much. Hope you all have a great Monday. Um, stay safe whether you are working or staying home. Um, stay safe. Lots of love to you all. Thank you so much for joining in this morning. Um, and I will see you on Thursday. Thursday. Join Kitty for the next couple of days for some gorgeous makes as well. Love to you all. Stay safe.